Have you ever wondered why sailors and pilots measure speed in knots instead of miles per hour or kilometers per hour? When you hear that a ship is traveling at 20 knots, what exactly does that mean? And where did that strange term even come from? Believe it or not, the answer takes us back hundreds of years to the early days of seafaring, when sailors relied not on high-tech instruments, but on ropes, wooden planks, and clever ingenuity to navigate the vast and unpredictable oceans. Today, we're diving into the fascinating story of how the word knot became one of the most enduring measures of speed on water and even in the air. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Before modern technology, sailors faced a huge challenge. How could they figure out how fast their ship was moving across the water? They didn't have GPS, radar, or even reliable clocks at first. Yet, knowing a ship's speed was essential for navigation. If you were trying to reach a distant destination, you had to keep track of how far you traveled and in what direction. Without that information, you could get hopelessly lost at sea. This was especially true during the Age of Exploration, when ships ventured far from familiar coastlines. To solve this, sailors came up with a remarkably simple but effective tool, the log line. The log line was basically a long rope with evenly spaced knots tied along its length. One end of the rope was attached to a piece of wood, usually a flat, quarter-circle-shaped board that acted as a drag when thrown overboard. As the ship moved forward, the log line would unspool from the reel, and sailors would count how many knots passed through their hands over a specific amount of time, usually measured with a sand glass. The number of knots that slipped through during that time gave them an estimate of their ship's speed. And that's where the term knot came from. Each knot on the rope represented a unit of speed. When a sailor said the ship was moving at 10 knots, he meant that during the timing interval, 10 knots had passed through his fingers, indicating a certain rate of movement through the water. This system was simple, practical, and surprisingly accurate for its time. Let's break down how it actually worked. The log line was usually marked with knots spaced about 47 feet and 3 inches apart. Why such an oddly specific number? Because when combined with a 28-second sand glass, the standard at the time, the spacing allowed each counted knot to roughly equal one nautical mile per hour. So if, during those 28 seconds, seven knots passed through a sailor's hands, it meant the ship was moving at seven nautical miles per hour. Over time, sailors simply shortened that phrase to seven knots and the terminology stuck. This method, though primitive by modern standards, was ingenious. It allowed sailors to estimate their speed with no machinery, no batteries, and no advanced mathematics. Just a rope, some knots, and a bit of teamwork. It became an essential part of maritime navigation for centuries. And even when technology advanced, the term knot never disappeared. It became so deeply rooted in nautical culture that it carried forward into the modern age. Of course, to understand knots fully, we also need to understand the nautical mile. Unlike a regular mile, which is based on land measurement, a nautical mile is derived from the geometry of the Earth itself. It represents one minute of latitude along any meridian, which equals about 1.852 kilometers, or roughly 1.1508 miles. This system makes navigation much simpler, especially for plotting courses on the globe. Since one knot equals one nautical mile per hour, 
It fits perfectly into this system. That's why navigators, sailors, and even aviators still prefer to use knots instead of miles per hour. It aligns directly with geographic coordinates and the curvature of the Earth. In other words, if you're navigating a ship or an airplane, knots make your calculations easier and more precise. By the 19th century, when steamships began to replace sailing ships, new mechanical devices called chip logs or patent logs were developed to automate the process. These devices used small propellers or rotors that measured how fast water flowed past the ship. But even with these advancements, the unit of measurement remained the same, the knot. It had become a fundamental part of nautical tradition and science. Today, knots aren't just used by sailors. Pilots use them too. Airspeed in aviation is almost always measured in knots because air navigation also relies on the concept of nautical miles rather than standard miles. Whether you're crossing the Atlantic Ocean or flying from one continent to another, your speed will likely still be expressed in knots. It's a perfect example of how a centuries-old invention, born out of necessity and simplicity, continues to shape modern technology and communication. But there's also something poetic about it. The word not carries more than just mathematical meaning. It carries the weight of history, adventure, and discovery. Every knot that a sailor once counted represented progress on a long voyage, the steady rhythm of exploration, and the human determination to conquer the unknown. Even as we use satellites, digital instruments, and high-tech sensors today, the humble knot reminds us of the ingenuity of those who came before us. So the next time you hear that a ship is traveling at 15 knots or that an aircraft's cruising speed is 480 knots, remember that those numbers trace their origins back to sailors tossing a rope into the ocean hundreds of years ago. From the gentle splash of a wooden log to the digital readouts of modern dashboards, the concept remains the same. It's a beautiful reminder of how human creativity, mixed with a bit of rope and a lot of curiosity, can create ideas that last for centuries. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.